Welcome to my next bowl making video. I kind of moved back to a one off bypass because I was having trouble with material. This is a, an accent ring bowl. She did it with a plywood. I could not find a plywood that would look nice enough. I cut two accent rings. I didn't like either one of them. So I kind of made my own plywood. Uh, now it's taken me three or four days to do that. But there's the blank. I made that. Uh, I think it's aspen and walnut, and I tried to uh, arrange that where the outer ring would go right across that outer walnut ring uh, with the size of the pattern that she has. I've tried to make that work. We'll see, but hopefully I won't go with this one if I don't like the way it looks because I've, uh, I've wasted enough material trying to make this work. So this one has three blanks. You got this blank. And then you got a layered, uh, that's a mahogany and maple. That's a 16th inch maple in there. And then you got just a plain uh, mahogany blank. Uh, that's, the plain one is for the two bottom rings. And this one is for this top ring. And then I got this will be the center accent ring. It's not cut at an angle. Uh, but I got to cut it. And then I got two pieces of maple here, 16th inch. I'll glue, if I can get them apart, I'll glue one to one side and then cut it and, and trim it. And the same thing on the other side. So it'll have these two lines right here. So there's like, I've got 20 steps written down I got to do to finish this. That includes cutting and sanding. Uh, there's multiple angles, and like three different angles on the bottom. And I think there's just one on the top, but uh, you got to get everything right, and then you got to do a lot of sanding to get that shape. So I've got a long way to go, and I uh, don't know how, how long it's going to take me to finish this video, but I'm not going to rush it. And like I say, however this accent turns out, I'm going with it. Uh, I think it's going to be okay, uh, make it look okay. But uh, anyway, let me get uh, the pattern mounted on that accent ring blank. And I'll start cutting on that. So I've got this pattern applied where I want it to cut all the way around. Hopefully it's going to come out pretty much the same on each one of those blocks. You've got eight of them. Uh, they said to use repositional glue and everything I use is repositional but it doesn't always work properly because you got to pull this pattern off, glue your, uh, your uh, accent rings, your, your maple on each side and trim each outside and then reapply this cut the inside but I've made two patterns just in case I can't get this one to remove properly but I'm gonna do this pretty quickly so maybe the glue won't be set too much it's a spray glue it is repositional but it doesn't always work that way for me so I'm gonna cut this outer one with no angle this was cut straight up and down a 90 degree angle to the bed This is the point that I have had trouble before, but I think I'm going to like that pattern. It's more or less what I was looking for. It's going to require some sanding to get everything just right, but uh, so far so good. Now i got to remove this pattern, glue a, a piece of uh, maple on one side, let it dry, and uh, trim it, and do the same thing again, and then reapply this pattern and cut the internal part. If I don't get it to come off right, I have another pattern. But while I, I'm going to go ahead and glue the maple on it, the first maple, and in the meantime, I'm going to start cutting the top uh, bowl blank pattern. So while the glue is setting up from a little maple veneer on one side of that accent ring, I'm going to make the first cut, the outside cut on the top blank, which has the uh, the maple sandwiched in it. I don't think you can see that very well. It's got the maple. It's mahogany and mahogany and a 16th inch maple with that little ring around the top. 
So I'm going to cut this outside one. It's at 28 degrees. I've double checked that. That's what this set for. I've got a number seven blade in there. So here we go. First cut on the top. There's only one ring for the top, so we'll have a bunch of three quarter inch mahogany left over for another project. Okay, I've drilled me an entry hole. I did it away from the line so I wouldn't have any sanding to do right there, hopefully, because we're not going to use the center part. I didn't get the angle exactly right on that, but it doesn't matter because I'm going to cut to the ring. We've changed the angle to 35, and the purpose of that, as she said, is to give you a little extra material to help in shaping this once you get inside. So, Anyway, point being, I've moved from 28 to 35 degrees, and this will cut the top ring. So that's the top ring cut. I got this piece. This is not going to be used for anything else. I'll figure out something to do with that. It's too much good mahogany to throw away. But as you look at this ring, this, this piece we're looking at the top is actually the bottom. That's what's going to glue to the top of the accent piece. And then the top, you use that extra material, that angle left, to kind of shape you around bead or edge on the bowl. So now I've got this cut. I'll I'll go check my uh, glue up job on my maple. I may be ready to cut that, I may not. If not, I'll start on the bottom uh, rings of the, just the plain mahogany blank. I believe this glue is good enough to cut this first uh, maple piece here. So I'm going to cut that around, try to keep it as even with that as I can, then I'll go sand it, smooth it off, and get the second one glued on, so I'm going to repeat that later. She recommended cut that with a number two, and that's what I did. Cut it really nicely, didn't tear anything up. I'm going to sand that down glue the other piece on the other side. So I've got the uh, second piece of maple gluing on the accent ring. I'm going to start working on the bottom two rings. Uh, I'm going to make this first cut, this, this outside cut of the first string. This is the side that's going to glue to the accent ring. So I'm going to cut this at 28 degrees. I've gone back to my number five, number seven blade. And going back to 28 degrees, and I'm going to start cutting this one out. Drill me an entry hole, 28 degrees. We've still got this at 28 degrees. Same blade that are used on the outside. We'll cut this, but then we'll change angles and cut the base with a little different angle. Leave the outside edge and cut the base at a little different angle. Right now, we're going to go with 28 on this cut.
Okay, so I put that ring that we just cut off right here and drew my second pattern. I got it off the first time, so I had to redraw it and mark some X's on the add line. But this was cut at a 28 degree angle. I've changed the bed to a 35. And if it wants to go around this, we kind of cut this bottom edge and make a rounded bowl. And I think that's the reason we're doing this. We're going to cut some of this off. And then we have to cut the inside to 35 also. Then on the base, we'll move it to 45 and do the same thing, just to kind of keep that rounded going around. So I got me an entry hole, an entry hole drilled here at 35 degrees. We're going to cut the center, uh, inner part of this this ring, at 35. Then we're going to set this on top of the blank, of the uh, base. Because since we cut the edge off the outside of it, it's not going to match up with the outside. It's going to be slightly in. We'll mark that and then cut that as an outside cut at 45 degrees. So for now, let me just cut this ring out at the 35 degrees, and that'll be the last ring. All we'll have to do is modify the base. Okay, I got the table set at 45. I set that ring on. I tried to color it. It's kind of hard to get to, to get in there to mark it, but I marked it the best I could. And I'm going to cut this like an outside cut at 45 degrees. And uh, we'll have all the rings in the base cut then. Well, I said that cut was the last ring. I was wrong. We've got to cut the inside of the accent ring. I've got the second maple uh, trimmed off and sanded down. And I've drawn an entry hole, uh, drilled an entry hole. Now we're going back to a, a 90 degree cut, straight up and down cut. And I'm going to cut this inside. Um, we was able to drill inside, so I won't have any drill hole to, to uh, sand out there. Let me cut this out and we'll see how this ring turns out. Okay, I got all the rings cut out. This is the accent ring. It has the maple on each side of it. It came out okay. It's all pretty pretty even all the way around. Wasn't exactly what I had in mind, but it's really close as far as the look on it. <clears throat> and then we got the, the bottom ring, the next the first bottom ring which goes against that accent ring. Then we got the top ring. And the next step, according to her book, is to glue these three together. Now I've made an error. Not a fatal error, but I've made an error with this top ring. You go back and look at the photo, and uh, at the start of the video, I'm showing the spool I'm going to make, you can see what the error was. I'm not going to point it out yet, but it's there in that ring. Uh, so, anyway, I'm going to, it's a little bit smaller, which is okay. 
Uh, the accent ring is a little large. I'm going to center it on there, put some glue on it, center it on there. I've got them sanded where they fit together very smoothly. And I'm going to let that get tacky where it won't move around easily. And then I'll put some glue on the bottom ring. And I'll end up putting it in the in the press and gluing that together. And then i got to sand the inside of it. But this is the beginning. To, I'm going to start with gluing this one right here. Well, I got that glued together. Next step, I'm going to take my inflatable ball sander and I'm going to sand the inside of that. I'll clean up the glue uh, and make it smooth. And then I'm going to start with an 80 grit, then I'm going to work up to whatever I have. I've got, I don't have all the grits, but I've got a few lighter grits I can move up to and smooth that off real nicely. And i uh, got to be careful and not sand too much this off because you got to glue it to the next ring. So anyway, here I go. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to set up my ball sander. It's going to take a while. probably won't film any of that. And I'm going to try to smooth that out and make it look nice in there. Well, I've got that sanded about as smooth as I'm going to get it. It's uh, got the rings pretty much even. I sanded some of it by hand up to over 200 grit. Uh, wearing out the, uh, the little sandpaper on the uh, ball sander really quickly. It was eating it up really fast. It's kind of an odd shape there, and it was kind of rough on it. Uh, they have those. They have little slits in those little circular things. The, the sandpaper has little slits in it. It'll catch on things real quickly and start tearing. That's what I was having trouble with. So now, this is the bottom. I'm going to glue the next ring on it. Right there, I'm going to let that sit, and then I'll sand the inside of that. Well, that's fit on really nicely. You can see inside there, it's pretty well lined up. I'm going to sand it just a little bit to clean that glue out. A little bit of a mismatch right there. I'll get that. And then I think the next, sec I'll, next step I'll have to double check is to put the base on and we'll start sanding the outside. But for now I'm going to go in and clean that up right there. Well I got that sanded. Uh, mahogany sands really nicely. Uh, wasn't too hard to sand. My, I just about worn that one sanding pad out but I managed to finish this with it. So now I'm going to glue the base on and then we'll start working on the outside of it. Start at the center, get all this smoothed out together and work way out. This, this is pretty good right here but I have to work our way down to the bottom. Now, have you noticed yet what I did wrong up here? Anyway, uh, it's not fatal but I'm not happy with it but it is what it is. So let me glue this base on. You know, do some outside sanding and be almost through with this. Okay, so the bowl is put together. It's uh I got it sanded inside pretty well, still got to shape the top, and I got to sand all this down, get all this smooth. 
I'm going to use a, the, my little two inch flexible pad sander and it's going to take a while. So I'm just going to work at it a little at a time because I like to take a lot of breaks standing there working. So if, as I go I may come and give updates. We'll see how well it goes, how fast it goes. Uh, I don't know if you see yet what I've done wrong here. I'll point it out at the end of the video. I uh, just made one one mistake there. And not like I say, it's not a killer, but it didn't come out the way it was originally designed. So anyway, let me get to sanding on it. And I'll check back in with you. Next time you see it, it may be finished. I don't know, except for I'm going to use wipe on poly on it, I think. I may not have that done yet by the next time I check in. So let me get started on it, and it's going to be a little while. Well, I've blended the uh, accent ring pretty well into the rest of the bowl, the, uh, the rings on either side of it. Uh, still, uh, it's got some probably some uh, fine sanding to do on that to get it in exactly the condition I want it. Uh, I'm still sanding with 60 grit, so I'm not down to a, a finish sanding yet. Now I gotta I gotta blend these in all the way around, remove a, a grill mark there. There may be one up here somewhere I still need to work on, but I think there's one on each one of these. But uh, so far so good. I think that's that's blending in real nicely. I may have to shape that a little more. Uh, work a little longer and kind of live with it a little bit and see what I like. So I get back to it and I'll blend these two rings in, remove these marks, and then I'll go back in and redo the, the top. Well I've got those two rings pretty much blended together. Uh, still got to go back over it with some finer grits and we'll work it down. I got a spot on, on that ring there somewhere I got to work out. Got a bad, bad piece sticking up. I got to sand down a little bit. <coughs> and Two or three more grits down on all of this and then I'm going to start working this corner off around here kind of curve it up where the original in the picture is and work from the inside a little bit too but first I'll take this off and kind of start shaping it as a curved area up this way but right now I'm going to get some finer grits on that pad, that pad sander and start smoothing this bottom off some Okay, I've gone through several grits on that, and it's very smooth. I think I've got it about where I want it. Now I'm going to shape this. I'm going to go back to a heavy grit. I may start on the outside with the pad sander and work that down and try to kind of curve that around a little bit. And then go on the inside with the inflatable sander and work the inside of it up to match it somewhere in there. And well, that's my plan. I'm just going to take it a uh, pass at a time, see how it looks, and then we'll finish that off with some fine sanding and I'll try to put a finish on it. I may raise the grain and sand it one time before I do that. But right now I'm going to try to work this lip down. Alright, I think I'm through shaping it. It's not exactly like hers. I got the lip kind of pointed inward. That's kind of what I wanted to do. Uh, didn't do a lot of heavy sanding on the inside, but I've worked it out. Mainly I took that corner off and tried to smooth it over and bring it up and in. Now, I, I did discover one thing. I'm using this inflatable ball sander. I was tearing up this uh, 80 grit, the 60 grit. It wasn't lasting very long. And I looked at it and realized that my drill press is spinning the wrong direction for the way these little flaps are. So I put it in my drill, and it spun in the right direction. Of course, it's reversible either way. And uh, because it's catching that, that flap right there, the way it's configured, the other, other grits are not that way. But I was tearing these up at a very regular pace. So I may have to do the rough sanding with my drill for now until I figure out something else. But anyway, that was one little problem solved that I, I'll make those little sanders last a little longer maybe. <clears throat> uh, you do a lot of rough work with those. Anyway, I'm going to see about getting a finish on this. Uh, it's not exactly like hers. Like I say, I made a mistake here. And I finished the top a little different than she did. But I think that's kind of personal preference and putting your own spin on things. So let me see if I can get some... I'm gonna, I've been using wipe on poly. It's been working real nice on these bowls. I think that's what I'm going to do this time, so 
let me work on the, a little more sanding. I got it polished down pretty good, but I'm going to raise the grain and polish it back down before I put the finish on it. Well, there is the finished bowl with one coat of wipe on poly. Now, the, uh, this uh, mahogany wasn't as bright as some mahogany I've used. As you can see, that's, that's both mahogany, but they're, they're just different, <clears throat> different looking. So you never get the same you know, out of mahogany. Uh, it usually has a really nice deep look to it when you finish it. That's close to it in there and right there. Then this is in grain, mainly right in here. These are in grains. So they don't uh, stand out quite the same way and they soak up a lot of finish. But anyway, it's going to take days to get all the finishes the coats of finish on this that I want because it's got to set another hour before I even sand it and then I'll put in a second coat on it and I put very very little at a time so that's just one coat I thought I'd end this with this first coat because it kind of brings out the uh, the wood the wood grain and helps it uh, help it show what it's actually going to look like uh, I haven't done the inside yet I'm going to do that later <clears throat> I haven't even finished sanding uh, when I raise the grain, but it's pretty good shape. So that's going to be the, the, the finish of the video for this this bowl. I may revisit it later and I'll get some more coats on it. I may come back and do a little follow up on it. But uh, it's, I need to finish this up, get a video up for this week. And I'm running behind again. <clears throat> and it seems like I always am. Well, I hope you like that. Um, so far, I'm pretty pleased with it. I'll, I'll know more about it when I get a few more coats on it. My wife really likes it. Uh, I showed her this, how I finished the top, a little different than, than the photo of hers. Uh, she said, well, she liked that, leave it like that. So I told her if nobody liked it, that would blame it on her. And she said, that's fine, she's going to keep the bowl. So uh, if you like that, hit the like button. If you're not subscribed, hit the subscribe button if you want to see more bowls because I'm going to do some more. And I've got two or three lined up. I've got the material ready for them. So uh, stay tuned and I'll see if I can get even better with it yet. I think I'm improving vastly from where I started. And uh, I'm enjoying this. I kind of like the finished product. So thanks for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.